Welcome to the World Championships Poker 2010. This is the final table with three contestants, Neat, Connor, and Jen. Let's go to some bios on these fantastic players. Neat Shaw. He has a BA in badassery. You can tell he means business. He is the favorite to win this competition. Connor Beeks. He's the underdog in the competition. He's the master of Asian, Asian persuasion. And Jen Pressler. She's a surprise entry in this competition. She's very boring. Back to the table. Here are their cards. The badass sitting with pocket aces. The master sitting with a nine and a two. And the boring with the queen of spades and a jack of spades. Now we'll take a look at the inside of Neat's body as he thinks he's going to win the game. This is Neat's heart right now as he expects to win the game. The heart is a double pump with the right side pumping blood to the lungs and the left side pumping blood to all of their organs. The walls of the heart are composed of cardiac muscle. Contraction of cardiac muscle is myogenic, meaning it can contract on its own without being stimulated by a nerve. There are many capillaries in the muscular wall of the heart. The blood running through these capillaries is supplied by the coronary arteries, which branch off the aorta, close to the semilunar valve. The, the blood brought by the coronary arteries brings nutrients. It is also uh, brings oxygen for aerobic cell respiration, which provides the energy needed for cardiac muscular contraction. The atria are the collecting chambers. They collect blood from the veins. The, the ventricles are the pumping chambers. They pump blood out into the arteries at high pressure. The valves ensure that the blood always flows in the correct direction. Every heartbeat consists of a sequence of actions. First, the walls of the atria contract, pushing blood from the atria into the ventricles through the atrioventricular valves, which are open. The semilunar valves are closed so that the ventricles fill with blood. Then, the walls of the ventricles contract powerfully, and the blood pressure rapidly rises inside them. This rise in pressure first causes the atrioventricular valves to close, preventing backflow of blood to the atria and then causes uh, the semilunar valves to open, allowing blood to be pumped out into the arteries. At the same time, the atria start to refill as they collect blood from the veins. The ventricles stop contracting and as pressure falls inside them, the semilunar valves close, preventing backflow of the blood and the arteries to the ventricles. When the, vent when the ventricular pressure drops below the atrial pressure, the atrioventricular valves open. Blood entering the atrium from the veins then flows on to start filling the ventricles. The next heartbeat begins with the walls of the atria contracting again. One region is responsible for in initiating each contraction. This region is called the pacemaker and is located in the wall of the right atrium. Each time the pacemaker sends out a, out a signal, the heart carries out a contraction or a beat. Nerves and hormones can transmit messages to the pacemaker. One nerve carries messages from the brain to the pacemaker that tells the pacemaker to speed up the beating of the heart. Welcome back to the game. The dealer is about to show us the flop. The flop gave us a king of spades and an ace of spades. That means the boring is only one away from a royal flush. The only thing that can top the, the badass is pocket aces. Now Jen is set up for a win. Let's see what's going on in her this body. This is what's happening in Jen's lungs during the game. Gas exchange happens in the alveoli of human lungs. Oxygen diffuses from the air in the alveoli to the blood and capillaries. Carbon dioxide diffuses in the opposite direction. Diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens because there are concentration gradients of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the air and the blood. To maintain these concentration gradients, the air in the alveoli must be refreshed frequently. The process of bringing fresh air to the alveoli and removing stale air is called ventilation. Air is inhaled into the lungs through the trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. It is exhaled via the same route. Muscles are used to lower and raise the pressure inside the lungs to cause movements of air. While inhaling, the external intercostal muscles contract, moving the ribcage up and out. While exhale, exhaling, the inner, internal intercostal muscles contract, moving the ribcage down and in. While inhaling, the diaphragm contracts, becoming flatter and moving down, but while exhaling, the abdominal muscles contract, pushing the diaphragm up and into a dome shape. While inhaling, air flows into the lungs from outside the body until the pressure inside the lungs rises to atmospheric pressure. While exhaling, air flows out from the lungs to outside the body until the pressure inside the lungs falls to atmospheric pressure. Now here's the turn. Ooh, three of spades. Now Jen needs the river card to be a ten of, 
ten of spades, or Need takes the game and the championship. The river card is a. Ooh, a ten of spades. Jen takes the championship. Here's the final round of betting. I'm all in. Erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets. Uh, erythrocytes are red blood cells, leukocytes, white blood cells. This figure that you can see shows all those um, components of blood coming out of one blood vessel. Blood has two main functions, transport and defense against infectious disease. Red blood cells transport oxygen from the lungs to respiring cells. Blood plasma transports nutrients, carbon dioxide, hormones, antibodies, and urea. The blood also transports heat from parts of the body that produce it to the skin where it is lost to the environment. White blood cells defend the body against infectious diseases, while phagocytes and leukocytes are described... There are many differences between arteries and veins. Uh, arteries are thicker to avoid bulges and leaks, while veins have thin layers with a few circular elastic and muscle fibers because blood does not flow in pulses, so the vein walls do not pump. Also, the arteries are thick to help pump the blood, and uh, the veins have thin walls that allow uh, the veins to be pressed flat by adjacent muscles, which also helps move the blood. Now, while we don't have a diagram of capillaries, capillaries are uh, very, very small or smaller than veins, and they have a wall that consists of a single layer of thin cells, so the distance for diffusion in or out is very small, and they also have pores between cells in the wall, which allow some of the plasma to leak out and form tissue fluid.